TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, man. You know what this is. This is twitch.com. Type in in that search bar, the lit one spelled just like this. And you can watch any of the lives you missed. Simple. Don't forget, we also got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday, man. We double uploaded yesterday. And now we got something coming today as well. And uh, don't forget, man, we do got merch. Everybody who ordered across the holiday season, y'all got y'all stuff. Simple. The link to all of that down below, man. Let's get into it, man. Let's get negative. But let's also have a heart. <laughs> Stephen Paul. Can't pay, we'll take it away. Let's go. Last year, UK landlords spent four and a half billion pounds repairing their properties after problem tenants left. Over the next year, these crippling costs may That's part of the business. force one in five landlords out of the property business altogether. What did that say? Let me. The average landlord spends over three thousand per year repairing damages to rental properties. That's part of a calculated expense, though, as a landlord. Uh, three thousand for one property. That's. You got to repaint. You got to redo the floors. You got to plug up any, you know. Any um, holes in the wall? No, actually, in in America. All you have to do when the tenant moves out is paint and redo the floors, like the carpet and or if it's just clean them real good. Anything else? This is called a security deposit. If y'all don't fix it to my liking, I will go get it fixed and send you a receipt and the rest of your security deposit that, that I didn't need to use. So hey. <laughs> Start to collect the security deposits out there. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner. The place where I live currently, the security deposit was 3500 Crazy. The rent is not even nowhere near that much, but it's 3500 for the security deposit. They ain't playing around. Our high court enforcement agents. Together, they have 45 years' experience in the industry. Oh, we starting off with them. No, don't, don't take no notice of your sat there. They travel the country, enforcing writs and repossessing properties. To I can literally watch this show any time during the day. Any level of tiredness, I'm, I'm going to make it through. This is a good show to me. Four seasons. Today, they're in North London to carry out an eviction. Today, we have a writ of repossession. Uh, we're in Seven Sisters. The house was let to Vaduva Mariana, who's been living there with her two children for four months. Okay, okay. But she owes four. six thousand pounds in four months? Unpaid rent to her landlord. She's never paid rent. Moved in and never paid. Keep going. Down the end. You can park in the bay here somewhere, probably. The landlord's representative is waiting outside the property. His name is Ginger. Really? Yeah. Why? Oh, she's got ginger hair. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Are you standing on something? Um, this is Steve, by the way. You didn't mention Steve before. Paul, the joke went over his head. Ginger, you're tall, is what he's saying. This yeah, is ginger. You? Let me give you a little briefing in. They've been there about four months. Yeah. No deposit, no nothing. Haven't paid a penny rent. They're Why? nothing but hassle. All the residents here have been bugging me to get them out. They're just a pain in the neck. There are two little kids there um, with one mother. Okay, so the See, now, now, going into this situation, I'm on the landlord's side. I understand there's two kids, but you moved in. You didn't pay a deposit. So there is deposits there. You didn't pay a deposit. You haven't paid rent. Oh, but also, you don't let nobody move into your property without a deposit if that's what you require. So, 
That's on you. The tenant, Vaduva, has already received notice of eviction from the county court. But the case has been escalated to the high court, and the agents are here today without warning. They know you, I take it. No, they know me, they don't worry, they know me. Everybody's been here before. I've been here. The police have been here so often. Go and sit in the car, Jim. Having the landlord's agent there really comes into the same classification as having the landlord there. If he's actually known to the tenant, the whole situation is likely to be turbocharged. There's somebody in the window. Not gonna lie, from the looks of the door area, it's looking kind of questionable. Morning. Hi. How are you? We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Cold. And we have a threat to repossess this property. Report. Pardon? What is this? It's a letter from the High Court of England. Yeah. Saying that you have to leave this property. Today. I don't understand. You have to pack up your bags. Take everything that belongs to you. What is the wording for the court? Where is the word? Not there. No. It says there, High Court of Justice. Romanian-born Vaduva doesn't seem to understand that she has to leave the house today. Her friend offers advice. That's an ill friend. That friend has lead you down a path of, <laughs> of, 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 of jail. One second, please. Hey, show us something for the court. Yes, yeah, sure, please do. In two weeks, I'm going to the home, not now. Vaduva thinks she has two more weeks before she has to leave. The defendant, this is you, yeah. you understand? Yeah, Good. a little bit. To give the claimant, that's the person who owns the property. Yes, yeah, owns the property. Two weeks. Owns the property. Forthwith. That means now. So this means now. No two weeks. Vaduva. Y'all gonna have to get a translator. I wouldn't even like, like somebody like me. I would. Do you understand English? And I'm not even being. I'm not trying to be offensive. This is real. T like, do you understand the English? Because this is this is worded funny. Like, I need you to understand what I'm saying right now. Do we need to get a translator? If so, I got you. Give me a moment. You know what I'm saying? Her has two children. To avoid them being homeless. Paul wants her to go straight to the council to apply for emergency housing. She'll get it. How many people here? How My many family. Okay. okay. What what nationality are you? It's a large number. No, what nationality? Where do you come from? Romania. Right. Well, the council should help you. I will speak to council for help about nothing. They won't do anything. Believe me, nothing. Trust me, they won't do anything until they get this piece of paper. Okay. Vaduva has one hour to pack her essentials and leave. But instead, she wants to talk to Ginger, the landlord's representative. Oh, man. Vaduva wants all the smoke at this time. You have to leave now. Why? Because you're out of here. That's it. Somebody, this lady, you come or you come in the office, you give you money, something for, no one gave for me make money. this. No one gave me money. Give me money? Do you see what I'm talking about? Like, y'all see what I'm talking about? Somebody in the comments is going to take her side. The nerve. You've paid nothing. Get out. See, now I'm on, I'm on timing now. What you mean? Give me some money. Penny. She told me. No one gave me a penny. She told me yesterday. I'm not going to argue with you. You know yesterday. Oh, okay. She's trying to make it sound like somebody went over there and paid. I'm not going to argue with you. No one gave me a penny. And you're leaving, you're leaving now. Simple. I don't leave. You're leaving now. I don't leave. You're going to leave. You have, no, leave. You have no choice. Ginger. You leave now. That's it. That's the end of the truck. That's from the High Court. That's the end of the line. You have to leave. Vaduva refuses to accept the authority of the writ. Da, 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 da. And now she wants to shut Paul out of the house. Well, that's fine. We'll break it down, Vaduva. At this moment, I would have called the police. Okay. Yeah. Stay here. 
Okay, you have the option to do this. Me, I don't understand yet. Okay, you speak perfectly good it's English. It's no hundred percent. Listen, the wait, stop. Listen, please. Yes. You speak perfectly good English. You understand what I'm saying. You either have to leave like this nicely and go to the council, or we will ask the police to come along and explain it all to you. <laughs> She's chosen the latter. Call the police. Often people will, will hide behind a language barrier. They imply that they don't understand what we're saying. Their body language and attitude and their reactions to what we're saying lead us to believe that they do. Vaduva is still refusing to get herself and her two children ready. But the eight... I like how Romanian women dress on this show. Like they just don't know nothing that, that, that fashion at all. I like it. Like, just don't care. You see me, taco meat out. I don't care either, Vaduva. You feel me? Let's talk about it. You got WhatsApp? <laughs> just kidding. Agents need to start making an inventory of the goods in the house. Upstairs, they make an unexpected... See, I tried to give the benefit of the doubt before I called this a brothel because I heard Romanian... But see, now I'm looking, I see a multiple mattresses. In discovery. Loads of rooms, loads of beds, loads of clothes. Loads of everything except for playing the ring. Each bedroom is filled with stripped down mattresses. The agents begin to suspect that there may be more people living in the house than just Verduva and her children. The family home isn't all it appears. Place is a nightmare electrically. Yeah. Sockets are smashed off the walls, everything. Lights. What started as a routine repossession has turned into an unpredictable situation for the agents. And with Vaduva refusing to leave, Will Paul and She got a forearm tattoo. Steve be able to keep this eviction on track. Paul Bowhill and Steve Penner were in North London to carry out an eviction. The tenant owed £6,000 in unpaid rent. Morning. Hi. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. No, we're not doing it. Was happy to discover there was more to the bed. Despite the mysterious... This place is a nightmare. Despite the mysterious circumstances, Paul and Steve must persuade Vaduva to leave the house and go straight to the council with her children for help. We'll give you to quarter past nine. I don't know how I'm going my children. Take them to the council, that's why. Hey, I'm going to the council, but don't hear me nothing. Well, you go to the council. No, I'm going to the street, Listen. I'm deep in the street. Ah, if excuse me, the police, if, you go to, if you go to the council, the council should help you. One second, please. I call some friend and go to this home because I don't have one second. Steve's patience finally runs out. He turns up the pressure. All right, let's call the police then. Nagy, then we're too far, so The threat of the police suddenly changes Vaduva's mind. Look here. Take my luggage. Okay, good girl. Thank you. Vaduva agrees to I ain't, gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, Paul. Good girl is a little bit wild for you to say. Leave. After four months without rent, the landlord's representative, Ginger, is close to getting the house back. It pisses me off what they do. It winds me up. We're losing our thousands. We got a mortgage to pay. Can't do bugger all until they leave. Look at the mess they've left in. Yeah, they tore your crib up. But as Vaduva gets ready to leave, Paul spots some movement in a downstairs room. There's, there's about six of them in the back bedroom. So oh. just going to check. Dang. What's going on here? They been using this as a hostel? Suddenly, a crowd of people appear from one of the bedrooms. They're packed ready to go. Left to their own devices, they'll be back here by dinner time. 
The men and women appear to be living in the house without the landlord's permission. The agents are worried that they'll return as fast as they have left. Nah, ain't none of that. Trespassing. Okay. I need to screw the windows shut, otherwise. They'll be back. Ginger thinks he knows how so many people ended up living in the house. I reckon they were people coming from wherever they come from, Romania, wherever they be, and just read them every night uh, a bed or whatever, pay per night or whatever, per week, make a few quid, and quick change over. Finally, Vaduva and her friend leave the house. It's not clear where she plans to go. Uh, I wonder if she even got kids. The council uh, wasn't high on their list. I've got the writ. She left it. Oh, she left. <laughs> she left all the court. Yeah, yeah, all got it. The eviction is complete. Ginger can now set about renovating the property, ready to be re-let. Okay, yeah. it's all yours. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. I'd shake it. Sh I wonder what it smell like inside the property. That'd be my curious. Like they need smell vision. I would love to know how to. Well, not love, but I'm just curious. Please before you got in. More than half of Britain's small companies are owed money in late payments. With estimates totaling as much as £255 billion, pounds, the effects of these late payments are crippling small businesses, leading to closures across the UK. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Alan Hunt are on there. Why is Brian with Alan and not with the black dude? What's going on? Way to New Romney, Ken. I don't even feel like I know Alan. Who is Alan? Grand Parade. Beside the seaside. Beside the sea. They have a high court writ to recover a debt owed by a drainage firm to a supplier. Today we're looking for £7,008.95. It's going to be very draining, you know. <laughs> I can feel it already. Yeah, the higher the, 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 higher company, the number amount. Free Flow Drains is run by the debtor, Steve Ross, from his home. Narrador, isn't it? It is, isn't it? I might have some trouble here, mate. I'll have to go in sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, garage. Oh, lovely. Let's have a look. No one appears to be in, but Alan finds an unlocked door. Oh, lovely. Here you go. Hello? Hello? Oh, Under the terms of the writ, the team have the right to make peaceful entry into the property. Hello? Hello? Hi, High Court Enforcement. High court enforcement. Hello? For me, gaining peaceful entry into a property, I think it's one of the hardest parts of the job for me. Um, I don't know what's going to pop out of a door. I don't know what's going to pop out of anywhere. We're in the right place. His office is here. Hello? Right, is nobody in? No. Right, jump on the phone, 101. After alerting the police that they're inside the property, the agents need to find out where Steve is so they can settle the debt today. OK, let's try and get hold of him now. Here, we've got a phone number. You ready? I'm not even going to lie, this is the creepy part, like, Yes, they have the power to be in your crib without you there, but <coughs> me on the pull-up, I'll be tweaking. Like, bro, what are you on? I wouldn't even be want to hear it. Hi, people. Is that Steve? Mm -hmm. Hi, Steve. My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm a high court enforcement agent. I'm currently standing in your office. Right. Basically, the reason for my visit, I'm here with a High Court writ uh, against Free Flow Drains South, South East Limited. Is there any chance you can pop back to get this resolved, Steve? Or can you can you pay it? 
Can you pay over the phone? It's £7,008.95. I'm, I'm, I'm a self-employed trainer, but, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm working from hand to mouth at the moment. Right. You know, um, I, I've not got that kind of money. If I had, I would love to, just to get it away from my back, you know. No, I appreciate that. Obviously, what I'm going to do now, then, is look look at the assets in your garage and in your office here uh, and see what there is to, to redeem to cover some of the debt, OK? So, so you're in my house? Yeah, I'm in your home, yeah. I just told you that, first part of the conversation. Sorry, I thought, I thought you said you was outside my house. No, I'm inside, with your rabbits and your little brown dog. Well, what are you going to take? Well, I'll, I'll deal with that when I look around and see, see what there is. Oh, you can't take it. Please let me get home and at least talk to you. Well, I just asked you, I just asked you to do that. I mean, I could probably pay about 700 quid. No, I need to... Minimum payments now, I need three and a half grand. I've got... No, I, I just... I, I, look, if I had it, I would pay. Look, just... just just, just bear with me. I am. Um, Steve, you Steve, Steve, hour? Steve. Can you give me an hour? Steve, listen, just listen yeah? to me. Right, take a deep breath, chill. I understand it's a shock to you, all right? <laughs> it's a shock. Yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait one hour for you, okay? Yes. Just get in the car. Take your time, and I'll see you in one hour, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, thank Steve. You. All right. Okay, thank you. While the agents wait for Steve to return, they start to look for business assets they can seize. If he can't pay the three and a half thousand pounds Brian has asked for today. There's lots of tools here. Generators go for about 200 quid. But there's a welding machine here. Fast charger, yeah. What have we got in here? Cordless, Cordless laser, circular saw. saw. Yeah, nice. He got some testing stuff. Kits. Yeah, they're quite expensive, some of these testing kits. Walking into the debtors' houses, you know, you're seeing their lives, you know, everything they've worked for in life is, is there that you can get your hands on. And, um, you, you, you know, you've got to be, be mindful of how people may react. 50 minutes later, Steve arrives home. How you doing? Have a worry, yeah? Steve, thanks for coming back. How are you? How about you? Thank you for no, no, that's cool, listen. I understand you were quite distressed on the phone about it, and that's why I wanted you to take your time getting back. About it. You know, I know the people who I owe the money to. Yeah, you haven't disputed that at all, have you? No, that's, that's I owe the, the, yeah. the money. I mean, it's just things have been hard. See, what they've done, they, they've now passed it up to the High Court, which is why we're here today. I mean, I would have paid him as much as I could each. I'm a, I'm a one man band, that's all I am. Brian wants to find out more about how the debt came about. So, what, are they family friends, are they? I mean, I, I know Peter and Matt, and you know, they only had to pick up the phone. They went to work for a company I worked for when I came and started on my own, and I used to pass all my work, to, all the lining work to them. Yeah. They're, you know, they're a pair of really, really nice yeah, guys. Yeah. And, and the company we was doing for didn't pay me to begin with, and they paid dribs and drabs, and one thing got another, work went quiet, and everything. I, I just couldn't afford to pay. You know, it's quite common in the building trade where people aren't paying invoices, or people aren't satisfied with work, or people walk off the job. And it has a knock-on effect, you know. If they're not getting paid, how can they pay out? It's clear Steve's company has fallen on hard times. But if he can't make a payment today, and some of his tools and equipment are seized, he risks losing his business altogether. Steve, I don't expect you to have seven grand. The problem I've got now is I need to keep the claimant happy. I need, I need a down payment or a large payment today of, of half the debt. Three and a half thousand we need today. I've sprung a month. Right, OK. Um, but I, I don't know, I mean, obviously... See, <laughs> you know, but no, no, I, I respect um, that. I'll said just... I'll give her a ring the minute I get here. Fine. That's so, fine, you know, fine. Steve calls his mum to ask for help. He, he wants three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. He's seven you owe, so I'm, I'm taking half. It's three and a half thousand. Well, y'all can just so call your mum and ask for 2,800. They like, mum. The bank of friends and family, it's a positive thing for me. It's nice for me to see him making that effort and that phone call because he wants to get it resolved or paid. Steve's mom has come up with two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, okay, I've gone through fine. Okay, that's great. That's good enough, Brian. Come on now. Thank you, bye. All right, okay, bye. bye. But as it's less than half the money owed, that's good enough. Call Brian the office, needs to Brian. set up a payment plan to clear the remaining balance. So if I say 300 quid a month, starting six weeks' time. Right, let me ask, all right? Yeah, Brian 300 calls is crazy. the office. It will be up to the claimant to decide whether to accept Steve's offer. 3,200 pay today. Pay today, yeah. And 250 a month, starting in six weeks. 250 per month. Yep, OK. Can you let me know, please? Yeah, yeah, cool. Thank you. 
If the claimant decides Steve's offer is too low, the agents will have no choice but to remove some of his valuable equipment. At the end of the day, in my heart of hearts, I know what I know what's yeah. wrong, and I know what's right and what's wrong. I was in the wrong, it should have been sorted, and it should have been paid. He's a good guy. He's a good guy, for real. Five minutes later, Brian hears back from the office. Cheers. Bye. The claimant has accepted Steve's offer. Happy days. Steve, thank you. All right, I just need a couple of signatures off you. Shake me hand. Listen, no, no, no. it's nice to meet you. Steve, listen, thank you so much, yeah, for no, coming back. Sorry, you guys, sorry. Don't be sorry. I don't want you to say that to me because we're doing our job and it's difficult. <laughs> no, but you've come back, you know, and I can hear the emotion on your voice. You take care, mate. Bye-bye. Everything will turn out well. Steve's business is safe for now. But if he doesn't stick to the payment plan, right. the agents will be back. This debtor's crisis is over for now. But in Paul and Steve's next case... Anybody in? They meet a woman whose life is turned... No, 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 no. Why are they always trying to give a... Like... Across Britain, 4.8 million people receive some form of housing benefit to help pay their rent. But over 66,000 households have had their housing benefit capped since 2013. Some tenants up and down the country now face a rent shortfall, increasing their risk of eviction. Oh my God, 77% of landlords who rent to housing benefit tenants face arrears in the last year. I know what that word, I know how to say the word, but I can, I hear the word in this show all the time, but I can't say it, that's tough. I would rent to um, housing benefit tenants, but I need the money directly from the office, you feel me? Like, I don't want them to get it, then give it to me. If that's not the case, then no. London. High Court Enforcement Agents. You feel me? Like, I just couldn't. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on their way to carry out an eviction. Right, this is a writ of possession. The defendant, Tatiana Celeste. The tenant, Tatiana, has been living in the house with her children for six years. But she hasn't been paying the full rent. Just pretty standard stuff, really. Probably cut her benefits and she wasn't able to cover the rest. Now she owes £10,000 to her landlord. Why the landlord let the bill get so high? But Paul and Steve are not instructed to collect the unpaid rent. They're here to repossess the house today. I don't want to laugh at nobody's misfortune, but I feel like there's about to be a, a level of negativity that, that, that we strive to be, that we strive for. Let's get into it. We're not going to get in? Is there anybody in? Hello? If there's anybody in there, we're from the High Court. We'll give you 10 minutes to think about it, and then we'll break the door in. The property appears to be empty, but Steve is suspicious. There's a key in the door. People are in there. Is there? There's a key in the door. It's locked. From the inside, I'm though. i see if I can find a coat hanger. OK. It's just slowing us down. The nuisance is, if they are actually in there and they're locking the doors, this can become quite sparky. Steve tries to dislodge the keys on the other side of the door. I'm going to put my mirror. The keys are gone. Sorry? The keys are gone. Is the door open, though? No. They took the keys out the door. They've come down sneaking on their hands and knees. There's still no answer. Then the landlord's agent arrives at the property. Hello. Paul? 
Steve. Steve. Oh, Hi, Steve. Hi. There's appears to be somebody in. Okay. Have you got keys? I was told by the landlord to attend with a with a locksmith. Right. Paul and Steve instruct the locksmith to break in. Oh, wait, just a second. If you stand back, stand back. That's right, thank you. Hello? Would you like to come downstairs? Or may I come? You know what would be crazy when somebody be, when you talking to somebody, like put yourself in this situation. You talking to somebody and, you, and they really take you as a joke. And then you really do what you say you're going to do? Like, ain't that crazy? Like, why you have to push me to doing what I had to say? What I, like, I'm standing on business 100% of the time. So if I say it, it's going to happen unless this, then this, and the third? Like, to put your pride aside. Because more than likely, you're not going to overtake me in whatever I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Come up. No lights. Oh, there is lights. <clears throat> okay. Hello. Hello. Six years. They got a bunch of stuff. Although the key has been taken from the door, nobody seems to be in the house. How they do that? Oh, they went through the back door. Where they gone to? Come out, sir. What on earth are you doing in there? It went a bit lively, didn't they? Why would you need to shoot out the back door? If somebody's knocking on your door and you have no reason to be worried about anything, why wouldn't you just open the door or even speak to somebody? Whoever was hiding in the house appears to have left in a hurry. Paul turns detective. So I was, what I was actually looking through the paperwork for is for the possibility of a, a mobile telephone number. But then he makes an unexpected discovery. Well, there's a whole load of tellies here, this big and this big. Stolen? The telly at home is this big. They have a collection of everything, don't they? Laptops. I think that's why they shot out the back door. No, it's a fairly common they in their boosters. Boot fair trick is to get electrical equipment and actually physically jet wash it with high pressure water to clean it up to make it look new. Let it dry out for a few days. It doesn't matter whether it works. Cling film it so that it looks even better and then sell it on a boot fair or in a pub or something. Upstairs in the bedroom, Pulls in for another surprise. So I definitely, whoever walks into this house, like, you're, you're scammers. That's a scam. You're a scammer. We don't like scammers over here, 100%. So. Nice. And we're looking around here, Dolce and Gabbana, NK. I mean, this is all designer gear. Timberland, they aren't cheap, 150, 200 pound a pair. I'm now looking at 70 pairs of shoes. Steve would like these. Kids' shoes don't count. Because just everywhere you look is money. What, what about your rent? The whole scenario, the setup of the fact that there was designer gear in the wardrobe, the fact there were eight or ten televisions downstairs, laptops, all sorts of technical equipment there, the fact that it was all in one house, which was a sort of two up and two down, was a very suspicious circumstance. Paul decides to call the police. I'm oh, High Court Enforcement. I'm at a house. Uh, we've repossessed the property. There's nobody here. But we're concerned there's about eight televisions, a load of laptops, and other items that lead us to sort of conclusions that are fairly obvious. And these are people who haven't paid the rent. Appreciate it. Bye. The agents have been at the property for over an hour. But now Steve is needed on another case. I'll see. Hey, buddy, looking like security. Uh, he looked like a the locksmith. It's a big dude. I'll speak to you later on. Give us a call. Let me know what goes on. I'll be brave. Think brave thoughts. But just as Steve leaves, a car pulls up. Uh oh. 
Ma sister asked, that's her property. Is it possible if I park there and come and Please, yeah. Tatiana's sister gets her on the phone. Hello. Hello. Yes, is that Tatiana? We've repossessed the house here. Pardon? We're High Court Enforcement Agents. We've repossessed the house. Come back, come on my way. How long will you be? Give me 20 minutes, I'm on my way now. I'm OK, coming. all right, OK. While the agents... It don't even matter. No, nothing you say is about to change the situation. Wait for Tatiana to arrive, her friends and family start to gather on the street. I ain't gonna lie, they're pretty the deep. Tension we get in here. Yeah, we don't want anybody turning up and moving large quantities of stuff till the police get here. A situation like this could very easily become hostile. <laughs> Minutes later, hello. hello. Are you Tatiana? Yeah. Tatiana finally arrives. Somebody's upstairs. Right. I want to know what's the matter. Right, I'm a high court enforcement agent. We've repossessed the house. For what the reason? This has gone through court. You must have been notified. There are rent arrears here, and the landlord has taken the property back. <laughs> she looked oblivious. She knows what's going on. I would be 100% very surprised if she was really didn't know what was happening. I uh, don't speak English very well. Okay. Uh, you can, uh, she can explain okay. to me. Okay. I love you, but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, 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 I'm going to tell you. I don't know anything about this. I've been into the court. That's it. I know they didn't receive the letter to tell me there when. There is no letter. There is, that's the letter. We've delivered no, it today. No, I I, I, I know. The court has made a decision, but the letter has been delivered. You have an hour to get your personal belongings together, mobile phones, identification. <laughs> Tatiana still doesn't understand why she's being evicted. She wants answers from her letting agent. So she don't know she owed 10 bands? What's happened is that housing benefit have been paying low money. Low money. Okay, yeah, six, yeah. seven hundred pounds. Yes. And every yeah. month, yeah. your money is going in arrears. 300, 600, 900, yeah. you understand? <laughs> Until it's got to a stage. But it's not, it's not like... It's, in arrears that the landlord wanted his property back. Tatiana's housing <coughs> doesn't cover all the rent. But she claims she's been paying the balance directly to another letting agent who hasn't passed it on to the landlord. Ooh. She's a chief woman. That's Me, I, I, pay the, I pay the money to, to... No, because it's, it's not good. I've yeah, got I know, my kid. I, know, I, know. I pay the rent every, every month. I pay the rent. The story that's emerging isn't what Paul expected. Her story is that that agent had not been paying the money to the landlord. Now, if this is the case, that is bogus. Like, y'all need to go find her, whoever she's talking about. But let's she's figure out who she's talking about. Paying £600 a month to that agent for six years. If that is true, she is in fact a victim. Despite her protests, Tatiana's time in the house is now up. It will be up to the police to decide whether to investigate the valuable goods in the house. Bro, don't nobody want this big back TV? That's theirs. They probably send the nets back, like to you know where they from, which is hyper common. So, Tatiana and her children are now homeless. They will have to apply to the council for emergency accommodation for the night. The 
the number of tenants in serious rent arrears is rising. Latest figures show that over 80,000 households are at least two. Just a side note, that was not the negativity that I've been waiting on. Months behind with their rent, an increase of nearly 20% over the last year alone. Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in Fulham, South West London. They have a writ to recover a debt of nearly £38,000 owed by a tenant for unpaid rent on a residential property. Let's have a bunch of just park here. The landlord is now pursuing the tenant, Abdanur Sadawi, for the rent he owes. The agents don't know where Mr Sadawi currently lives but they have an address for him at a cafe. Oh, we're going to a cafe around the corner here, Cafe Nunu. But it's a big debt, £37,986. A few coffees there, mate, too. And if they're black. <laughs> <laughs> nah, white coffee's better for you. Oh, there it is, yeah. Is it really? It's, this is it's nasty. I tried a cup of black coffee, like, a couple of days ago. I finished it, but it was nasty. Isn't the first time High Court enforcement agents have pursued Mr. Sadawi for payment. But this is Brian and Dell's first visit on the case. Can Hello. I speak to the boss man, please? Boss is coming uh, Hello. to the maybe half an hour. Wanna call him, let him know we're here. Yeah, I'm calling, yeah. Thank you. What's your boss's name? Abdinot. I assume, yeah. Abdinot. Yeah, High Court, sure. High Court. If Abdinor Sadawi owns the business. The writ allows the agents to seize assets from the cafe to offset the debt. Abdinal, I'm here to enforce a high court writ um, for £37,986. Sorry? £37,900. amount so large, he couldn't even fathom what was going on. £186 and 10 pence. They say. 37. You owe money to Jeremy St. Ledger Brown. No, I have not. Well, that's, no. what, that's what it said, sir, and we've got a high call. No, I have not. How, how long will it take you to get here, sir? No, no, I'm not coming here. Okay. You're not coming? No. We're here, sir, to enforce the writ. You need to attend. Yeah. He's gone. I don't know. I don't While the agents wait to see if Mr. Sadawi turns up, Dell wants to find out more about the debt. What's your, what's your name? My name Munir. Right, you're not, you're, you're not named on here. No. So name, I can't really. Is, is the, right. Because, because him, him, him is my cousin. Okay. Because my mother, my mother, is the sister of him. But he's not going to turn up. Cool. Then we'll empty it out. Mr. Sadawi has refused to pay Can the we, debt. Are y'all actually going to empty something out ever? I've never seen it. I've seen y'all threaten it. I've seen y'all start stacking chairs. I did see y'all take a car or two once, but like... So Brian is already looking at the assets in the cafe. Well, if it costs a grand worth of stuff, we'll take it. Coffee machine's expensive. Yeah. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. But ten minutes later, a man arrives at the cafe. Who's that? Is that him? Hello, sir. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you for coming. It's nothing to do with you. Okay, fine. No problem. It's not my shop. What's your name, it's, please? My name is Munir. Okay. Munir. Munir? Yes. Okay, Munir. Yes. But you said you were Munir. Abdenur. Munir. Abdenur. Who's Abdenur? Look, I'm, so you're Abdenur? No, no, no. I'm Munir. Well, why am I speaking to you then? Yes. I'm Munir. Just for working here. Okay. The man claims he isn't the debtor, Abdanur Sadawi. Is this Abdanur? So you look, let's, I'll tell you what, let's cut it short. Have you got any ID? Sorry, I don't have. You don't have? The man claiming to be cafe worker, Munir Nunu, calls his solicitor. He says he can provide documents to prove that he doesn't own the cafe. So it's a bit of a waiting game at the moment to get the documents, I think. That will tell us all we need to know. Dell asks to speak to the solicitor. Hello, sir. I'm a High Court Enforcement agent. My name is Delroy Anglin. I'm in possession of a High Court writ. Who owns this shop? I don't know. You can check that. You know, I don't know. I have no clue. 
Do you, do you have a copy of the list? Why are we talking to them then? Please for this business here. No, no. And can you confirm the identity of the of the person here? Is it is it uh, is it Abdin or Sadoi? That's correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. You gotta get on whoever you calling and all your people. You gotta get on the same page as them because they just low key accidentally blew up your whole situation. Now you gotta now you gotta answer. The right? man who said he was Munia Nunu appears to be the debtor, Mr. Sadawi, after all. It's interesting. We've now established he is the debtor. The solicitor's done so. So he's lying. How long have you been trading here? He's not, I, I'm not dreaming. I just come to look for some time. Okay. No. Mr. Sadawi is adamant that he doesn't own the business. It's a... All right, well, let's do some inventory, Brian. Let's start collecting stuff, cutting stuff off. Stalemate. So will Brian and Dell be able to get to the truth and recover the £38,000 they came for? I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to say nothing, but Abdul here. He got like four slices of hair combed over the top. Just let it go, my boy. Y'all tell me to let it go. Tell him. Hi. He got four slithers of hair. That's tough. A court enforcement agents, Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin, were at a cafe in Fulham, West London with a writ to recover almost £38,000 in unpaid rent. You got a few copies there, mate, tell you. And if they're black. When they arrived, the debtor, Abdunur Sadawi, claimed to be someone else. I'm Munir Nunu. You just brought in here. Dell discovered that the man was Abdunur Sadawi after all. Can you confirm the identity of the, of the person here? Is it, is it, uh, is it Abdunur Sadawi? That's correct. Now the agent. It's nothing you can say, Abdinor, that that's gonna make these agents believe you don't own this property now. You already lied. <laughs> agents must dig deep to uncover the truth. If the business doesn't belong to Mr. Sadawi, they won't be able to seize any assets from the cafe to offset the debt. See a panini press that gotta cost some money. This cappuccino machine, not thirty-seven bands though. <laughs> This is your cafe, yes? No, it's not my cafe. Cafe, the cafe? Yeah, the cafe is not mine. So it's whose is the cafe? It's uh, Ud Hasi Lu. Is he a relation of yours? No relation. Do you have, a, do you have your lease? Do you have no, a lease? no, no, it's not in my lease. It's his lease. Having heard him lie about his identity, the agents are Can't suspicious. OK, it's half past three. I need to see the. I need to see documentation. Okay, we don't want to take any further action unless we have to. Just hear me. Well, then we're going to continue. I'm going to take the stuff. I don't want to do that. But if you can get that documentation, I'll leave it. Fine, we, we continue. Brian's patience is running out. The shop's now shut. Okay. Tell him we're going to remove goods from the shop. If he's not forthcoming. He's not really being helpful towards us. I think he'll listen now. Mm. When Brian flipped that sign from open to close, you know he mean business. Okay, listen carefully. If you don't provide me with the relevant information I need, yes. you need to pay it or we enforce the call to here. No, no, no. He's yes, yes, yes. Well, let's get Megan in. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. No, no, no. Okay, fine. Can you provide me with the lease agreement, please? Then I will continue with action. We need to sort this out. Yeah? Okay, maybe not then. Sometimes it's good to let them have a little think, you know? With Mr. Sadawi outside, Brian tries to get some more information from his nephew, Munir. It's expensive around here. Brian is, um, these with Mr. Sadawi outside. Hear me out. <laughs> now, look, ma'am. All right, now. You better go home. I'm trying to be professional. Brian tries to get some more information from his nephew, Munir. It's expensive around here. It's expensive, isn't it? 
expensive. Yeah, yeah, business, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rent expensive too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday you paid 700. Was that a week, for a week? Week, one week? Yeah. Or business rates? Yeah. Nephew said he paid 700 quid yesterday for his business rates. And why would you pay the business rates if it's not your business? No. There you go. You know, there you go. It's, 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 to be fair, it's, it's the simple things that people trip up on. If you, you wouldn't pay the business rate. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. If y'all lying, y'all got to be on the same page. Y'all got to think about how hard it is to cover up a lie for your entire life. Like it's, 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 it's hard work. It's for somebody else on a regular basis. So it's clear to me, as far as I'm concerned, him and the business are one. I just want to confirm that by seeing the documents. Mr. Sadawi's story is unraveling. Dell searches the cafe for more evidence to link him to the business. This is a copy of an inspection report. Yes. Why is your name on this? No, when they come, they find you. You have to give it a name. Nah. Nah. No, That's you. That is you. You're telling me lies, my friend. I'm having to drag you screaming to the truth. I've had yes. to find paperwork to link you yeah. with this business to prove that you own it. OK? I not own it. Yes, you do. No, stop it. it. Stop it. Brian and Dell now believe they have enough evidence to demonstrate that Mr. Sadawi owns the cafe. It's not quite changed over yet. Dell turns up the pressure. Now we're getting somewhere. Tell us about the money that's out. Are you going to pay this money? How can he pay this money? Well, I don't know. Tell me how you're going to pay it. I don't have the money. So you have no money? No money. No cars? No car, nothing. You're only refusing to pay? I don't know. He's worked for the fifty. Well, it I, is, aren't you? No. You have no money in your pocket? No. Of not one pence? No. No. Oh. With Mr. Sadawi claiming he has no means... I mean, it do be like that sometimes. I ain't... What have I got in my pocket? See what I'm saying? I got to look too hard. Ain't nothing in there. Piece of lint. ...to pay. Seizing goods from the business is the agent's only option. But the value of the assets in the cafe doesn't... OK, OK. I'm be real, I don't want none of this. What is this? ...come close to clearing the £38,000 debt. I want to collect the money for the, for the claimant. However, in that situation, there was a distinct lack of assets. So, yeah, it can be very frustrating. With payment looking unlikely and with no valuable assets to seize, Brian and Dell have no choice but to leave empty-handed. There's not much more we can do. He's got no intention of paying. We can't do anything else here today. Here's your key. How, how would you feel if someone robbed you of your money? How would you feel about that? I know how I feel. How would you feel about if you rented a place out to someone and they never paid you? How would you feel? Have a good day, no problem. You. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. It will now be... Yeah, bro feel victorious, Loki. He wanted to smile so bad. ...be up to the claimant to decide whether to continue to pursue the £38,000 debt. Absolutely. 38 bands? I'm... I'm... I, you're gonna... I'm gonna pursue it for a lifetime. It's worth it. Mm -mm. With court fees attached. So it's just gonna grow for this man. All right, Steve, this is a good man, told ya. Wait, Tatiana proved to the police that the goods in her house were from a car boot. Oh, okay. But did y'all find the lady who she allegedly was paying? Next. Tell her leave a like, comment, subscribe, man, I'm gone.